All right, I'm gonna solve another Sudoku today. Well, try to solve another Sudoku today. Um, I uh, was gonna, I thought this one looked interesting and I was gonna solve it, so I figured why not turn on the camera and maybe some of you guys would enjoy it too. Um, I found it here on uh, Logic Masters Germany. It's called Vineyard by uh, Gerkels, I think is probably how you pronounce that. I'm not really sure, but I, it caught my attention. All these two cell thermometers, um, that are supposed to look like, I guess, grapes on uh, on vines, uh, presumably. Um, had some interesting rules. One rule that I, I actually uh, am not usually too excited about, but that's okay. <laughs> it's good to test your limits sometimes. So let's open it up over here in F Puzzles. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description uh, where you can find this puzzle if you want to try it out yourself. Um, and I'm going to attempt to solve it, so hopefully there will be spoilers coming. Um, if not, you won't be seeing this video anyway. So, um, all right, let's look at our rules here. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits along a thermometer must increase from bulb to tip. So typical thermometer stuff just has to increase going towards the tip. Now, the interesting thing in this one is it looks like they're all two cell thermometers. I think every single one of them is a two cell thermometer. Uh, disjoint groups, cells in the same position relative to their box must be different. This is the rule that, it's not that I don't like this rule. I don't like solving with this rule sometimes because it's really hard to keep track of. So the idea with disjoint groups is, for example, there's a two right here in the top middle of box one. That means you can't put a two in the top middle of any other box. Um, likewise, the five here means you can't put a five in the right middle of any other box. So that's the idea behind disjoint groups. And, and as a result of that, since you can't repeat a digit in the same position, that means you must have all nine digits in the right middle of a box somewhere. So there has to be a one somewhere in one of those highlighted ones. There has to be a two somewhere. So you can kind of look at it both ways. Um, what's eliminated and, you know, which areas are available for a digit. So, um, it's an interesting rule. It gets some weird, you know, like the five here affects fives in this box, which normally wouldn't happen. So there we go. That's that's the rules. That's it. Pretty simple rule wise as far as, um, you know, understanding the rules, not necessarily simple to solve. Uh, I believe um, Gerkles has, I think it doesn't have enough. Yeah, only four solves so far. So this four star out of five difficulty rating is Gurkle's, um, I guess, what he's guessing people are going to think. Um, so it shouldn't be too simple, I don't think, but hopefully not too much trouble for us. All right, let's see. What can we do? So the best way to go about thermometers usually is to focus on ones and nines because a one can't be on a thermometer unless it's at a bulb. Um, so box five right here, immediately I can see Eight of the nine cells have thermometers and no bulbs, so the one must be in the middle. All right, that's an easy one. Um, and a nine, likewise, cannot be on a thermometer unless it's on a tip. So column three here, lots of bulbs. That's the only place you can put a nine. Column seven, this is the only place you can put a nine. Um, so we get a few easy digits. I suspect that's going to change quickly getting the easy digits. Um, all right, so in here, we can't put it on a bulb and we can't put it there because of that nine. So we get a nine there. That gives us an, a nine down here. Um, nines over here. Let's see, where else can we go? Can't put a nine, any of those. So that's a nine. Actually, We're actually getting more digits right away than I expected. Um, Nines over here. In the middle, there's going to be lots of options for nines. Um, well, although disjoint group rule, we got a top middle, a top left. We've got a right middle already. We've got a bottom middle already. So nines are going to be somewhat limited there. Not not as much though. Um, okay, maybe we need to look at eights now. You know, we could look at ones more, but there's so many bulbs in this puzzle. 
lots of bulbs, lots and lots of bulbs, lots of places for ones to go. I mean, there's so many bulbs. I, I can highlight all of those without even, you know, picking up the mouse, just dragging around. Um, way too many options. So I'm going to look at eights now with the nines. So, yeah. So let's look at box one here. If we put an 8 in any of these bulbs, normally you could put an 8 in a bulb on a 2-cell thermometer, but only if there's a 9 at the tip. Because if you put an 8 in here, it's giving us red because it knows it's wrong. But you put an 8 in here, what's going to be bigger than an 8 that you can put in here? Nothing, There's because you already got a 9. So you can't put 8s in any of these, and you also can't put an eight there because again, you'd have to have a nine at the tip, and we already decided that can't be a nine because of the disjoint rule. So the eight has to be in the middle there. Um, now in this box, it's not as good because you could put eights in any of these bulbs because you've got nine possibilities there. Down here, we can't put eights in these. Or in there. So there's an 8 at the top. That's helpful, maybe, potentially. Um, eight, uh, but again, we've got a 9 there, so you could put 8s in. Well, you can't put it in the middle because of the disjoint, but you've got eight, po four possibilities for 8s there. Uh, what about over here? You can't put, uh, again, no 8s in these bulbs because you'd need a 9 in that tip, so you can't put 8s here. So one of these is an 8, and in fact, if one of those is an 8, this must be a nine. No matter where you put the eight there, you gotta have something bigger on that thermometer. So that gets rid of those options. Uh, the bottom right nine also gets rid of this one, which gives us that nine because of the disjoint sets rule. That nine, and actually that was the only nine option in row four now anyways, since this nine eliminated those. So we've got nines over here. Um, if this is an 8, that has to be a 9. If any of these are 8, that has to be a 9. So, the 8s are going to go with the 9s, sort of in tandem. So if any of these are 8, that'll be the 9. If this is an 8, that'll be the 9. Yeah, that doesn't really help too much, though. I don't think that gives us anything. Okay, let's keep looking at 8s. So we had an 8 here, so we can't put 8s up here or there. And again, you can't put them on the bulbs because you'd need a 9 on the tip in the middle. So this is going to be the 8 over here. Puts an 8 at the top. But these bulbs are possible because of that 9. Eight, puts an 8 in the middle here. Uh, again, these can't be 8s because you would need a 9 on the tip here. So our 8 is going to go there. Which gives us 8s over here. Oh, bottom right can't be an 8. we still got three options. If we could, If we could limit it to row 5, that would be helpful potentially, but we can't. Or if we could limit it to column one. Um, either way would be helpful. But I'm not seeing how to do that yet. Eights in the middle, just like nines, there's going to be a lot of options. Um, can't be here because of the disjoint, but those four are all possibilities for eights, I think. At this point, anyways. Um, well, this 8 here eliminates that one. I missed that. So now we've got 8s. Yeah, so I was going to say, since we have 8s in the top left and the top right in two boxes, that means you can't put an 8 in a top left or a top right in any other box. Because it's either going to have to be here and here, or here and here, but we already, I mean, we already don't have eights as options in the tops of any other boxes, so. Um, can we do any more with the eights? I 
feel like there's something over here with the fact that the eights and nines, if, if this is eight, that's nine. If this is eight, that's nine. So eight, nine would put nine and eight down there. Eight, nine here would put Yeah, those still seem like both possibilities, so I'm not seeing a way to fix that yet. Um, eights, eights, eights. What did we decide down here? Those can't be eight. There's four options for eights there still, I think. Top middle, yeah. I was trying to see if I could eliminate this one. That might be helpful, because then we would have three boxes that have the same three. Um, this one only has two of the three, but you couldn't put an eight in any of those positions in any of the other boxes in that case, but I think you can still put an eight there. Um, Okay, let's maybe maybe we can look at sevens. We don't have very many eights yet, but maybe we can figure out something with sevens. Sevens now. Yeah, over here. Okay, so uh, same thing we did with the eights. We said you couldn't put an eight on a bulb because there'd have to be a nine in the middle. Well, if you put a seven on a bulb, you need an eight or a nine in the middle, and we can't put an eight or a nine in the middle right here. So those are so this and this can't be a seven because again you need an eight or a nine. On the tip, and you've already got eight, and so this has to be a seven. Um, so seven. What does that do for us? Can that help us down here? Can't put a seven on any of those. You can put a seven here though, because that could still be an eight. Um, what about down here? We put we can't put a seven on any of these bulbs. Ah, we can't put a seven on this bulb because again we'd need an eight or a nine here. So those are all those are all ruled out. So there's a seven over here, which puts a seven over here. And again, just for the same reason, we can't put a seven there. So this is a seven. Seven, seven. There's sevens down here. We can't put sevens here because you need an eight or a nine on that one. So the seven must be at the top here. No, seven must be at the bottom. Sorry, sorry, because we can't put a seven here. So the seven must be at the top. Just put sevens at the bottom. And again, same thing as over here. This can't be a seven because that would have to be an eight or a nine. So that gives us that seven, um, which by the disjoint rule removes that seven option down here now we can't have sevens here can we do this can't be a seven because it would need an eight or a nine so sevens are at the top here which gets rid of this seven which gives us the seven there and the eight there. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, seven. Sevens. Are these all possible for seven? The middle one's not because the disjoint rule. Those three, this could be a seven. These could be, yeah, if these were sevens. Sevens here. Sevens down here. Ah, sevens down here, and it can't be in the bottom left because of that seven. So that gets rid of this one. So we've got sevens at the top. Sevens at the top here. Are 
all four of those options for sevens. Oh, like I said, I got rid of that one. Okay, those three. Are all three of those possible? Seven here would mean this is an eight or a nine. Seven in either of these would mean this is an eight or a nine. Would that work? If these are sevens, I don't think, okay, I think I see. So if, if this is a seven right here, let's just put it in there. That puts eight and nine right here. It also puts a seven right up here because you've ruled out, uh, well, it puts a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It puts a seven right there, which means this has to be an eight or a nine, but these have to be eight and nine. So I don't think this can be a seven. No, I said this can't be a seven, right? Yeah, this can't be a seven. So this is a seven, okay. Which puts a seven over here in one of those two, which means this has to be an eight or a nine. And again, if this is a seven, this becomes eight and nine. Which puts a nine there and an eight. Eight and eight, yeah, okay, that works. If this is a seven, oh, I think either one of those is still possible. If this is seven, this is eight, nine, this would have to be an eight. Eight, nine, yeah, I think that works. Okay, so that's still a possibility, but we know one of these is a seven, so this is definitely an eight or a nine right there because it has to be bigger than the seven. Do we know that this one is an eight or a nine? Can we say that? Can we have one of those? What if the, if this this was nine and eight, nine? Yeah. Okay. We don't know yet that that's an eight or nine. Okay. Um. Eight, eight, eight. What about? Have eights down here. Oh, okay. So we can't have eight here because of the disjoint rule. And we can't have eight across the top because we already determined that from over here. So eights must be in one of these two, but eights must be in one of those two. Um, and so they're sort of an X-wing, um, but an easy one to see, I guess. Uh, so in column four and six, the eights are already limited to boxes two and eight. So in box five, the eight must be in the middle here, which means it has to be down there, right? Yeah, because we've already got the eight here, which means this is nine, this is not, so this can't be eight. So this must be eight and seven. Eight, no, oh, 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 that's, that's a nine. Uh, the eight has to be here. And that eight in the top left means this is not an eight. So those are seven and eight that in that order. Um, all right, do we have, what are we missing? Nine, 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 we've got all the nines. Do we have all the eights? Almost right here. Clean up my pencil marks. Sevens, we need a seven there. I think we have all the sevens now too. Beautiful, now we're moving along. Okay, sixes, sixes. Can we do something with sixes? It seems like the next natural place to go um sixes can't be here because same same logic you know for a six to be on a ball it needs a seven eight or nine on the tip and we already have seven eight nine so these can't so this has to be a six right no oh sorry <laughs> I, I eliminated sixes from the bulbs um you know what i'm going to turn off the conflict highlighting that feels like cheating sometimes when you put in a digit and it pops up as red and it's okay to use it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna not just for the extra challenge, um, <laughs> extra practice. So these can't be sixes. This can be a six. Now the question is, can this be a six? Obviously, it can't because I typed it in and it made it red. But it can't be a six because this would have to be a seven, eight, or nine. And we've already got seven, eight, nine in that row. So this is the six. That's what I should have said. So these can't be sixes. 
this can't be a six again because you'd need a seven, eight, or nine. But I think either one of those can be. And at the top we got lots of lots of possibilities. This one can't be, but these these can. Actually, you know what? Since you can't put a seven, eight, or nine in here in that row, none of those can be sixes. Because they all lead down into those. So this has to be a six, I believe. Um those be sixes yeah they can uh what about over here these can't be we got two sixes there these can't be sixes this can't be six because again seven eight nine issue and this one can't have a seven eight or nine there so i think yeah this is the six but it's a six here can't forget about the disjoint rule it's so hard to, you know, look around for that one. Um, there's two. Uh, what else can we do? Six. Oh, so there's a six down here just by normal Sudoku because of these sixes. So now we can't have a six here. Can't have a six up here or there. Oh, so the one of these is a six. The bottom left now has a six, so that one can't be. Let me just. So bottom left, bottom middle, 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 and top right. Okay. Um. So what about over here? We can't put one there by the disjoint rule. This disjoint is really hard to, to, to see. It's, it's hard to, we can't do this because of the row, but it, it just messes with my brain. Um, <laughs> is there anywhere that we can put it in the top middle? Except right there, top middle. Ah, yeah, right here we still can. I'm gonna mark, there's still several options, but I'm gonna mark the six possibilities in this box. So there's a six in one of those two, I believe, yeah. Because it's the only place you can put a six in the top middle. All right, um, I'm not getting too far with the sixes. I got a few sixes though. Maybe, maybe we should look at fives. Can we look at fives? Well, same deal down here, you know, six, seven, eight, and nine aren't allowed, so we can't have fives there. But five could be in either one of these. Um, if this was a five, that would have to be a six. Is that a problem? No, I don't think it is. Six, six, that would put a six up there. I think that's still okay. Um, actually, where, oh yeah, there's six, sixes are still possible up there, aren't they? Nope, not that one, because the top, oh, so we can't put it, can we put it there? Maybe that was the possible one. Yeah, that one's a possible. Okay, I knew there was still three up here. But there's none. Yeah, okay. Still three up there. Um... All right, fives, so we've got them here. Uh... If there... Oh, so there has to be a five in one of those. Well, it can't be right here. There has to be a five in one of these. Oh, it also, oh, there's a given five. <laughs> I 
I was I was thinking we we hadn't got any fives yet because we just started on fives, but there's a given five. I forgot about that one. Um, so that means you can't put a five there. In it, there has to be a five in row three, obviously. One of these four, you can't put a five there because there would need to be a six right there. Since we already have seven, eight, and nine, so there's a five in here actually, which puts a six right there. No matter where you put that five, you're gonna need the six. Up there, so that's gonna give us this, these sixes, and the six there. It's gonna give us the six up here and down here. Is that all the sixes? Ah, there we go. Okay, good. Um, now fives here with the given five gives us five up there. Uh, these can't be fives. So there's a five down here. None of these can be fives. Same deal we've been doing. Same trick. So if any of these bulbs is a five, the tip has to be bigger. Six, seven, eight, nine are already taken. So this must be a five. Um, so puts a five there. And now we've got a five in the bottom middle. So that can't be a five. We've got to remember our disjoint rule there's fives there fives up here but you can't do top right can't do middle right i think those are still possible um, and those bulbs already have something on the tip that's bigger so those are still okay what about right here did we did we use top left or middle middle yet uh, no, we did not. These can't be fives. So one of those is a five, right? Oh, we've already got bottom middle. Okay, so one of these two is a five. That's going to give us the five down here. Which puts a five up there. Fives here and here. And again, this middle box isn't super helpful because um, they're all tips, so we could put a five in any of those. Um, well, not any though, because of the disjoint group. So we've got top right. We've got. We don't have. We don't have top left yet. We don't have bottom left. We don't have bottom right. So any of those can be five still, I think. Now, top middle, is there any place I can put? No. Okay, so if you look at top middle, can't go here, or here, or here. And it can't go in any of these three because of this five. Can't go there, obviously, and it can't go up here because of that five. So the only place you can put a five in a top middle of a box is right here. Now, I don't know if I can figure out the other fives yet. Let's let's look at fours, maybe. Fours seem like the next logical place, right? Um, fours. Oh, and we have a given four. Let's not forget we have a given four. <laughs> um, Four, so there has to be a four here. One of those. This could still be a four if that's a five. If that's a five. That's a five. Yeah, okay. Those are still possible. Um, fours, fours. Oh, fours can't be here because of the the given. So that puts a, that gives us an easy one. This one can't be a four, since that can't be a five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So we can't have fours. So fours are up there, which puts fours down here. Puts a four in the middle. I already have the four down here. These fours, are these all possible fours? 
Yeah, I think so. I think those are still good. Um, this has to be one, two, three. This can't be two. This is a one or a three. Ah, so we're going to get a two down here just by Sudoku. So these are a one and a three. That's going to give us this two. These are going to be one, three, and four. Maybe we can figure some stuff out just from disjoint sets. Um, we already have a one in the middle, so that can't be a one. These have to be two, three, and four to complete the row, which means these have to be, hmm. well, there's a two over here, so they can't be two, but they could still be three or four, actually. Um... One, two, three, and four. Two, this has to be, I mean, three, four, or five. That's not super helpful. Wow, I figured it was all just going to fall apart now that we got a lot of the digits in here. I'm probably just missing something obvious. This can't be one. One, two, three, or four. Um, these are one, three, and four. This one's not a one. This one's not a four. Oh, so this one, this one is one, three, or four, and we already decided the four is up here and down here. So this can't be a four or a one. So this is a three. Um, so this is two or four in those. We've got twos in some places, but we haven't eliminated these positions yet for twos and fours. What about, these are one and four up here. So this can't be a one. Have we eliminated one and four from top middle or top right yet? Not that I can see. We do have a three up here though, which puts that, moves that three. Um, So one, two, three, four, five. So there's a, th these are, hmm. Well, this can't be a three. So one, oh. one, two, four, and five. Um, why do I have, why did I remove four from there? Is there a reason I removed four from there? I don't I don't know that there was. I think I'm confusing myself with my pencil marks now. Um one four, so this is two or three is the box there. This two and three here means these are one, four, and five. But this one can't be five. Is there any reason it can't be one or four? Don't think so. These are one, three, and four. So the two is here. This is not a two. One of these is a two. So I've got twos down here, there and there. Can I, I can't put a two there. This can be a two still though, can't it? No, 
no, this cannot be a two because in this box, twos are limited to row five. So yeah, so row six, where can I put a two? Twos, twos, this has to be a two because you can't put a two there because it has to be bigger than the two. So that's a two. I'm just gonna get rid of that two. It's also gonna get rid of this one by the disjoint groups rule. Um, which puts a two right here because it's the only option in this box now. So now that's going to eliminate this two, which gives us a four there. Um, eliminate fours there. One, two, three, and five. One, two, five. Um, I'm I'm really trying to pay attention to the disjoint groups thing because it's it's really it's hard to see. Ah, so this is a two because of this two here. Two, two. Um that four makes this a two. These are th Three, four, and five. This one can't be five by the disjoint. Um, so now that that's okay. This has to be bigger, but that's not really a problem. That's correct. Um, oh, so two. So that means this has to be the one because it has to be smaller. So that's not a one. That gives us a four or five pair. That's going to give us the three and the one over here. That three is going to give us a four and a one and a three. Now that's not a three. Um, let's look at the disjoint. Is that an issue? Yeah, that one there is going to give us, well, and because of the one down here actually, but four and one. That one is going to give us the three and the four. The three down here gives us the one, gives us three, and then over here is a one. Now we're getting there. Uh, we've got a three, four, five triple, so that's not a five. That makes this a five. Three, four. So fives here, two, three. Ah. Disjoint group, there's a three right there, so this is a two. And that's gonna come over here, which is gonna give us those. Um, this three, no. There's gotta be some sort of disjoint thing that's gonna give us these. Three or a four in the top corners. Ah, no, no, it's a thermometer thing. <laughs> I'm so focused on the disjoint. This three makes that a four. Five, four, five. This can't be a five or a four. That's a three and a four and a three. And the timer turned, uh, I believe, green is that color, but I am colorblind, so I could be wrong, which means I, I think that's correct. So there you go. That was Vineyard by uh, Gurkles. Um, that was actually pretty fun. I, I don't usually like disjoint groups, but um, it was used in this, but not um, not to the extent that I've seen it in some where it's just like every deduction is based on the disjoint groups. So um, that was good. It, it makes you, it really makes you focus on things to try and see how, you know, a four here means you can't have a four down there and weird stuff like that. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, go check out Gurkle's other stuff on uh, Logic Masters Germany and and uh, I'll see you guys next time.